Hello Borough fans, it's Joe from Borough Fan TV and this is the preview for the upcoming game on Saturday the 11th of September with a 3pm kickoff as the Borough take on Coventry City in the Scarbet Championship at the Coventry Building Society Arena. Well Borough fans, we're back again, back in the league after, uh, it seems like a forever and eternity of an international break, I know it's only been two weeks but it seems like forever, obviously um, England playing out two wins and one draw during the, the break and obviously... Um, Obviously, that little setback against Poland might not affect us whatsoever. But in the meantime, it's back to the Borough, back to the league. Um, obviously, the transfer windows came and it went um, during the, that break as well. And uh, we've seen some incomings in the near enough deadline day. And we've seen some outgoings. Um, we'll talk about the outgoings first. Um, obviously, um, the biggest uh, surprise for me personally was obviously Sam Morsey. I mean, it was it was one it was kind of, for me. It was like one of our de better defensive for the midfield players, but um, according to what reports are saying, I think he was uh, let go basically because um, uh, just to reduce uh, the amount of the wage bill, which I think is understandable, but in my opinion, we shouldn't have let him go, really, to be honest. He went on to join Ipswich Town on an undisclosed fee. Of course, him reunited with his former manager at Wigan, Paul Cook. So, all the best to him, all the best to Sam, you know, down at Ipswich. And we also saw Jed Spence go out on loan as well to Nottingham Forest for the season. I mean, Jed Spence, throughout his uh, time in the Borough squad, I mean, he's been a bit of a hot and cold player, I mean, at times. You know, you never know what you're going to get when you turn up to watch him. I mean, uh, on his day, he could be a, a top-class player who's not afraid to go forward from full-back, but there's more time, but there's some games as well he can be lazy and can frustrate a lot of Borough fans at times, but... You know, I think um, a move out on loan for Jed will probably um, help him boost uh, with the confidence and hope improves his game at least whilst down at Forest. So, and um, we also saw a couple of players going out on loan as well. Uh, Stephen Walker, uh, one of our young strikers, he's gone out on loan to uh, Tommy Rovers for the season. I mean, he's been had, having a few loan spells recently and he's now gone out on loan again to Tramier down in League Two. Uh, Nathan Wood as well, he's gone out on loan to Hibernian in Scotland for the season. Uh, that, I think that's a good move all round for, for both clubs, really. I mean, Wood can benefit from a good full season, you know, up in Scotland. So, all the best to him down at Hibs. And uh, Hayden Hackney, a young midfielder, he's gone out on loan uh, till January, in fact, to Scunthorpe United in League Two. So, getting some good game time, you know, down there. Um, now, incomings. Near enough on deadline day, we did complete a season-long loan deal for O'Neill Hernandez. He's coming in on loan for Norwich City for the season now. I know we've been desperately in need of wingers in this window, I and mean, we finally got one uh, in the shape of O'Neill Hernandez. I mean, throughout his time at Norwich, I thought he was a decent player. I remember him, you know, a couple of seasons ago when he played against us at the Riverside, scored a really good goal against us. I mean, <clears throat> last season, he didn't feature as much for Norwich, obviously because of injury, and... Um, I think with the signings that Norwich made in this window as well, I think um, he fell a bit on the pecking order down there. So uh, getting a good season out of him with us, you know, on loan, you know, we'll see Ono Hernandez as well. And also we complete the signing of striker Andrew Aspera on loan from Sport in Lisbon. Slovenia international, um, from what I've seen of his goal scoring record, it, it was pretty looks pretty good. I mean, he's only featured for Sport in Lisbon on um for a couple of seasons, he, then he went out on loan to Braga last season and he scored a fair few goals there. Um, so hopefully, you know, if uh, if if we can play a system that could play both him and Ipiezu up front, I mean, who knows? <laughs> and then we also uh, completed another loan deal for James Lee Saliki, who's coming on loan from Wren from the se for the season. Um, for what I've heard, he's a good holding midfield player, he can go forward, he can also play on the left-hand side of the of defence back line as well so hopefully you know we'll see what goes with him so all, all in all it's been a good window for us Borough fans you know let me know in the comment section you know if this has been a decent window um, you know in, uh, in that timeline for us Borough fans now last game before the break was obviously a 1-0 draw at home at the Riverside against Blackburn Rovers um, it was a game for the majority with which we could have won even though we drew 1-0 they took the lead, in my opinion, I think it was their only shot they had all game. Obviously, uh, Sam Gallagher pulled off a, a peach of a shot. I mean, to, to be fair, it was a decent finish and uh, nothing that Joe Rummy can do about that. And it was one note of them. And then Borough got the equaliser close to half-time with Johnny Housen um, securing a good finish over the keeper to make it 1-1. And then throughout the second half, they were 
there were some moments where we could have won the game, more notably um, uh, one of our latest recruits, Tayozi Olasanya, could have had, had a good chance. And then and then the game really kicked into life when um, Hayden Carter got sent off for Blackburn and then no less than a few minutes later in his last appearance for the Borough, believe it or not, Sam Morsey ended up seeing red, which obviously, in my opinion, wasn't a sending off. But we ended up at a point, which I think was a fair result for both teams in the end, but uh, looking at the league position going into these upcoming fixtures, Borough sit in 13th place at the moment. With uh, one win under their belt, three draws and one defeat. Not exactly an all inspiring record, but you know, it's, it is only uh, September, so plenty of time, you know, to improve that for the next few months. Now we'll go on to our opponents uh, for the, this coming Saturday, Coventry City. Um, obviously, as from a neutral perspective, it's great to see them playing back uh, in their own stadium um, at the Coventry Builders Society Arena or the Rico Arena, if you're a traditionalist. Um, and they're doing good so far this season. You know, Mark Robbins is doing a good job down there, as he's done for the last, previous like three seasons, I think, now. Um, they're currently sitting in seventh place at the moment, just one place below the playoffs. But in this game, their current record at the moment is played five, won three, drawn zero and lost two. Last game out was a bit of a disappointment for them. They lost 2-0 away at QPR, so no doubt they want to build, improve on that result uh, against us, but hopefully not. Um... But like I say, they're back at the Rico. I mean, I mean, they've been unbeaten there since they moved back there, which is great for them. But hopefully, you know, we can put an end to that this coming Saturday. And not to disrespect the commentary because they've got, a, you know, a good fan base. Obviously, they've got um, a good squad, which I'll go through now. I mean, play the, I think the two players I think we've got to watch, in my opinion, are both from the centre-forward line. Obviously, Martin Waghorn, we've been linked with a couple of times before. And obviously, a former Sunderland player as well, which add a bit of spice to the Borough fans that are travelling down there. And also Victor Gorkaresh, who's coming from Brighton, the young Swedish striker. Um, I was, he was he was on loan there uh, last season for a bit and then he made a move permanent. And I've got other players as well, like Gustavo Hamer, who can cause a threat from uh, the set pieces in the midfield area. Carl McFadzian is a rock in the heart of the defence, and Dominic Kayam as well. Um, Callum O'Hare and Tyler Walker are some other forward options that Coventry do have, so as well as Matt Godden. So, I mean, they're a decent side, Coventry. I mean... Obviously, like I said, they're back at the week and I'm happy for them and happy for the fans as well because they had a, been through the mill over the last few years and it's good to see them back, you know, where they belong for now at least. And I think they're planning on building a new stadium, obviously, in the, in the next 10 years. So good luck to them. Now, obviously, um, last time we played Coventry was obviously when Coventry were ground sharing at Birmingham City at St Andrews. And um, in that game, Borough ran out 2-1 winners. Um, even though Coventry went uh, in front first through an Anthony Dagsteel on goal and then goals from Grant Hall and George Savile secured Borough the points that day. And I think we did the double over them last season. Obviously, we beat them 2-0 at the Riverside with Asoma Longo and Spencer getting the goals. But, you know, Coventry are a good team, no doubt. But hopefully, you know, we've got to improve um, a good, our results because we don't want to be known as draw specialists this season, that's for sure. But obviously, with the new sign is bedding in and hopefully, you know, getting it all together. I mean, obviously... We can only hope until the next day, you know, international break around like early mid to October, we can get a few wins in and start improving our position in the table in the championship. Leave me your thoughts and predictions for this game in the comments down below, Borough fans. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe as always. Our social media links will be in the description below. And until then, Borough fans, I've been Joe from Borough Fan TV and I will see you on the next preview video, which will be for the game on Wednesday the 15th of September as Borough remain on the road as this time they head up to the east, down to the East Midlands to face Nottingham Forest at the City Ground. Until then, Borough fans, take care, stay safe and up the Borough.